Let me show you how to transform a single merged table into a star schema using Power Query in Excel. Before we get our hands dirty, let's talk about what we're doing here, which is something called database normalization. Basically, normalization is about organizing your data in a way that preserves integrity and eliminates redundancy. In other words, it helps make sure you don't screw up the data or store a bunch of stuff you don't need. Now, there are multiple forms of normalization, which we'll talk about later, but here's a simple example. This Excel workbook contains transactional records for a global retailer. We have information about each transaction, a unique ID, the order number, line item, order and delivery dates, and quantity sold, which is great. But we also have tons of columns containing things like customer demographics, store locations, and product details. Now, Excel users have a habit of merging data like this using lookup or index match functions. And it's tempting to do so because there's something very intuitive and comforting about having all the data in one convenient place. You can see it right there in front of you and explore it using familiar tools like worksheet formulas or pivot tables. But here's the problem. When you mash data together like this, you create a ton of redundancy and build solutions that just don't scale. For example, all of these columns here, which actually represent about three quarters of the data set, are an absolute waste of space. Why? Because all these details are dependent on primary keys. In other words, if we know the customer ID, we also know the gender, name, and address. If we know the product ID, we can figure out the product name, category, retail price, and so on. So instead of storing those same values and attributes over and over again, we can create separate lookup or dimension tables specifically designed to store and deduplicate that type of information. In this case, one dimension table would contain a unique list of customer IDs, along with any columns containing details about customers. Another would contain a unique list of store IDs with details about each store location. And a third would contain unique product IDs with information about each product. By doing this, we can remove those fields from our transaction table, keep only the key columns, and create relationships between them without writing a single formula. Better yet, we can do all of this within Excel's data model, where we can load and compress huge data sets without having to worry about worksheet row limitations. All right, enough talk. Let's fire up Excel and see if we can use Power Query to turn this table into a proper relational model. All righty, so I've got a brand new workbook here, and my first step will be to connect to our Excel workbook containing the merged table. So let's head to the Data tab, Get Data from File from Excel Workbook, I'm going to select that transactions workbook and click import. Excel is going to create that connection, fire up the preview pane. And here I can see the transactions tab within the workbook with all of my data previewed right here. I'm going to click transform data to fire up the query editor. And here we can see all of that data that we previewed earlier, the transactional records, the customer details, store locations, product information, and so on. Note that this is already in what's called first normal form since the records in each field are atomic. That basically just means that each cell in the table contains one single data point. There are no lists or repeated groups or things like that. So our focus here will be on getting rid of some of these redundant fields that we talked about by splitting out separate dimension tables. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this transaction table three times. So I'm going to be creating three separate dimension tables one for customers, one for stores, and one for products. And if we start with our first duplicate here, why don't we kick things off with our customer dimension table? So first step is to scroll through and just isolate all of the customer specific columns, including the key or the customer ID. So let's select customer ID. We're going to want gender, name, city, state, zip, country, continent, and date of birth. So I'm going to hold shift, click through the customer DOB or date of birth column, and I'm going to right click and remove all of the other columns from this table. Now we have a table containing just customer detail. And the key here to reduce that redundancy that we're seeing is to remove duplicates so that we end up with a unique customer ID for each record. That's going to serve as the primary key of this table. So let's go to remove rows, remove duplicates, and it's as simple as that. We can also sort ascending for readability. And if we wanted to double check and confirm that these customer IDs are in fact unique, what we could do is head to View, Column Profile, 
and we want to profile not just based on the first thousand rows, but the entire data set. And check it out, we've got a row count of 11,887, all of which are distinct and unique. That means we have a valid primary key for this table, and each row, each customer ID, represents one distinct customer. So we can go ahead and turn off that column profile, name this table customers, and we are good to go. Now we're going to follow that same process for stores and products. So we'll go to our next duplicated query here. This time I'm going to find all these store related columns, store ID, country, state, square meters, and open date. So it looks like we want these five columns. We'll remove all of the others, head to home, remove duplicates. And again, this is optional, but we can sort ascending. And now we can very clearly see that this retailer operates an online store and then a whole bunch of stores looks like 66 or so stores across different countries like the US, UK, Netherlands, Italy, Germany, France, etc. So we've just deduplicated our store information and created our stores dimension table. Let's go ahead and name this one stores. That looks good. And we're going to do the same thing for products. So let's scroll over, find all of our product related info, starting with product ID. We've got a name, brand, color, cost, retail price, and then some subcategory and category level information too, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail later on. So let's remove those other columns. Now we have a product table. I'm going to jump back to my ID, remove duplicates, sort ascending, and we are in great shape. So let's name this table products. And now that we've created these dimension specific tables, here's the beauty of that. We can go back to our original transaction table and we can actually get rid of all of those columns with the exception of the keys. So we'll keep customer ID, but we're gonna get rid of all these details, gender, name, city, and so on. So everything through date of birth, I'm gonna right click, remove those columns, all of the store attributes, right click, remove, and all of our product details, right click and remove. So now this table just gives us the transactional level information, right? The order number, the line item, the order and delivery dates, the quantity, plus our three keys, customer store and product ID, which will allow us to create relationships to those three dimension tables that we just created. So that's everything we need to do for now. What I'm gonna do is head to home, close and load to. This is important, I'm only gonna create a connection I don't want to dump all of these rows and data points into a worksheet. I want to add this to the data model instead and create a proper relational model. Let's press OK. We'll see the queries and connections pane fire up, and we'll start to see those connections loading data into our model. All right, perfect. We've got all of our data loaded. From here, we can head to Power Pivot, Manage our data model. Here you can see those connections. The data has been compressed here in the model. We're going to head to diagram view where we can view each table as a distinct object. And what I'm going to do is pull my transaction table, which is my data or fact table. I'm going to put it right here in the middle. I'm going to kind of surround it by my dimension tables, customer stores and products. And now instead of writing all sorts of complex lookup or index match functions, all I need to do is select the primary keys from each dimension table and map them to the matching foreign keys in my fact table. So customer ID relates to customer ID, store ID relates to store ID, and product ID, you guessed it, relates to product ID. And what we've just created is known as a star schema, which is a very common database structure and often a best practice for many types of data analytics. We've got that central fact table transactions surrounded by dimension tables connected via one-to-many relationships. And with this star schema, we can access the exact same information that we could using a merged table. We can even explore it using Power Pivot, which is essentially just a regular pivot table that sits on top of a data model instead of a single table. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm going to add a pivot table right here in the worksheet, cell A1. And here I've got my familiar field list, and I can grab data from any of my related tables in the model. So let's take a look at total quantity sold. We can break that down by product category. 
like so on rows. We can sort this descending to see which categories are sold most often. We could even add a slicer to understand which stores and which countries sell different types of products, start to get a sense of which products are most popular in different parts of the world. And we could also define new calculations and measures using data analysis expressions or DAX. We could add visuals using pivot charts or even use cube functions to pull values from our model directly into worksheet cells. And as a bonus, we've removed over a million redundant data points and reduced our workbook size by more than 70%. So this is all great, but it's important to note that technically we haven't fully normalized the data. There are still some dependencies that we could address by splitting out additional tables in our model. For example, let's look at our transactions table. So we know that this table is in first normal form, but in order to further normalize it to what's called second normal form, it would require us to eliminate any partial dependencies. In other words, columns that only depend on part of the primary key, which in this case is our transaction ID. And if you look closely, you'll notice that some fields like order date, delivery date, customer ID, and store ID only depend on the order number. So the same information is repeated for each line item in the table. And that makes sense, since each order takes place on one specific date, and you wouldn't see different customers purchasing individual line items within one order. On the other hand, some fields like quantity and product ID depend on both the order number and the line item, or the full transaction ID, since orders can contain multiple individual products. What that means is that to achieve second normal form, we need to break this into two separate tables, one at the order level and one at the order line item level. So let's make that happen. I'm gonna right click, duplicate this transaction table again. Let's drag it up to keep them together. And why don't we start with our order level table here. And just like when we split out our dimension tables, the key is to isolate just the relevant columns here. So for order level detail, what I'm gonna grab is the order number column. I'm gonna control click the order date, delivery date, assuming all line items ship at the same time, which is the case with this data set. I'm gonna select customer ID and store ID. Let's right click, remove the other columns. And now just like dimension tables, we're gonna remove duplicates from this order number field. And this will become the primary key in this table. And what we can do here is rename this table name. Let's call this one orders. That's okay, let's rename. And this duplicated version, this will become line items. So for this one, we want the full granularity, the full level of detail. So let's go ahead and keep the ID, the order number, and the line item, because we want all of this information here. Let's keep those three. We're gonna keep the quantity field. And the last one we need is the product ID field. Right click, remove the others. And we actually don't need to remove duplicates because we have the deepest level of granularity and we know that these transaction IDs are already unique. So let's double click. Let's name this one order line items. And there you have it. We have officially removed the partial dependencies from that original transactions table, and we've achieved second normal form. Now we could keep going down this path with some of our existing dimension tables as well. For example, let's look at products. Now this table is actually already in second normal form because all of our non-key columns do depend on the full primary key or product ID. So there are no partial dependencies like we just saw in our transaction table. That said, if we scroll through, you'll start to see that we do still have some redundancies here, and we could continue to normalize this table from second to third normal form, which would involve getting rid of any transitive dependencies as well. I know that's a mouthful, but it's basically when columns are dependent on fields other than the primary key. And we do have some transitive dependencies here our product category and our product subcategory don't depend entirely on the product ID, but rather their own key columns like product category ID and product subcategory ID. So this is another case where splitting our tables will help us eliminate some of that redundancy. What we can do is duplicate our product table and duplicate it twice because we're gonna end up with one dimension table that's at the product level one that's at the subcategory level, and one that's at the category level. 
So let's start with our second version here. This will be our subcategory table. And let's find all the fields that are subcategory related. We've got the product subcategory ID and the subcategory name. And here's the catch because I want this table to also connect us or relate to the category level detail. I also want the category ID field here as well. So I'm going to right click, remove the others, and I can remove any duplicates from our subcategory ID. That's going to turn this into the primary key of this subcategory table, and we can rename it subcategories. Similar approach for categories. Let's go to our next duplicated version. This time we just need the category ID and the category name. Remove everything else. Get rid of those duplicates. And now we have a nice, clean category level dimension table showing the eight product categories that this retailer sells. Let's rename that one categories. And now that we have these dimension tables split out, we can go back to products and get rid of those redundant fields. So now all we really need is the subcategory ID, which will allow us to connect to subcategories. And then from subcategories, we can connect to categories. So I can select everything after that, subcategory name, category ID, and category, remove those, and we've eliminated that redundancy. So let's go ahead and close and load this to our data model. Press OK. And we should see those new queries here with the data loading in. All right, looks like it's all loaded. And now we can head to our data model. We can go back into our diagram view. And we should start to see some of these new tables here. So instead of one transaction table, now we've got orders and order line items. We've got products here and then hanging out over here on the right. Don't miss them. We've got subcategories and categories. And you can see our relationships have gone away since we modified our model. So we basically just need to recreate or reconfigure our data model based on the new table relationships. So we know that the fields that were related at the order level or customer ID, like so, and store ID. Well, products connect to the order line item level. So that's where we find our product ID. We can also connect our distinct order number using a one-to-many relationship to the order number in our line item table. And then we can make a similar chain of relationships connecting our product subcategory ID to our subcategories table and our category ID to our category level table. So as you can see here, our data model has become quite a bit more complex. We no longer have that nice clean star schema. We've got snowflake schemas, which are basically just chains of dimension and subdimension tables. And we could go even further by normalizing our customer and store tables as well. So at this point, you're probably wondering how much normalization is enough. Do I need to eliminate every single redundant data point? Is there some universal standard or best practice? The short answer is no. The most important thing to keep in mind about normalization is that it's all about trade-offs. More normalization means better integrity, less redundancy, and smaller individual tables, but it also means more complex data models and therefore more complex queries, especially for multi-table analysis. That's why star schemas, even though they aren't usually fully normalized, are such a popular choice for things like BI reporting or exploratory analysis. Now, I hope that helps. If you'd like to learn more, check out the description for links to our self-paced courses, learning paths, and guided projects. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. I'll see you in the next one.